Hi, so this is a very quick run through of the installation process that we'd go through to set up and configure the new load balancing component that's available as part of the Smart Connector Framework uh, release of as of September 2015. Uh, I'm actually going to go through a very quick uh, installation process and show this, the very simple uh, straightforward setup. In this case, it's just for uh, syslog uh, UDP load balancing. Uh, I've got uh, this running on a couple of uh, VMs here. So we've got uh, one connector here that's just running uh, the syslog one. Got another one again running syslog here so we can actually balance the load between it. And I've got a separate machine I'm actually going to run the load balancing component on and do the initial setup and configuration. Just be aware there's a few things that we need to go through as, as part of that process. Uh, as part of this uh, mechanism, um, what I will need to do is I'll need to make sure that I've configured up remote connection or remote management for the uh, actual smart connectors themselves. It's not enabled by default if you just do a straightforward uh, install of the of the actual smart connectors, which is what I've got here. I've already set it up, but uh, just to show that there's uh, a couple of different ways of doing it. You know, for example, you could just actually edit the agent.properties file. You'll find that under the current user agent folder. Uh, if I actually just do that and then I'll I'll show you at the end of the file because it's a syslog one uh, you'd actually find that there will be this uh, remote management enabled uh, you just add that in and again the port number there uh, and then that would enable it and restart the connector uh, alternatively uh, if you didn't weren't aware of this you can actually just run the agent setup uh, and when you get asked the uh, view this is just on Linux with X windows uh, if I want to run it in wizard mode instead when well, I don't I want to view uh, the actual settings itself uh, you can actually see all of those settings available there's lots and lots of options and, and uh, things that we can configure there uh, but actually if we just scroll a little bit further down we will find the settings for remote management uh, so that would be set to uh, false by default and I'm just using the standard port so again I could make that change and restart the connector and that will turn on remote management you have to turn on remote management for all of the connectors you're going to be putting in the load balancing pool so I've already done that I was just showing that that's the first thing you need to do there uh, the next stage is we actually need to do the installation um, so I'm going to do that. I already have the component already there. So we just do the install. Launch the installer. Graphical. There is a, a command line option as well, but I'm just going to do the graphical one. Um, I've got a couple of terminal windows here, so I'll actually do some troubleshooting as I'm going through that as well. Uh, the installation is actually very simple indeed. Uh, I'm going to put it into my opt arc site load balancer folder, click next. Uh, I'm not going to create new links, so just go ahead and install. The install process doesn't do anything more than just literally copy uh, the components and the JVM and so on uh, into the relevant folder there. Uh, it's not going to do any initial setup. Uh, I actually have to do that manually in this, this particular version 1.0 uh, product. That's okay, uh, but just be aware that you have to do a manual configuration process. So now we have the uh, the actual software configured. Uh, the first day, the first step that we actually need to go through is we do need to, def to to copy the template of the configuration. So I'm actually just jump to a separate terminal window there, uh, and if I go into uh, the actual um, folder itself, current. So again, same same setups as we've previously seen uh, with the actual folders. Uh, so config uh, load balancer and we take a look in there you'll see there's a number of files of templates that we'd use here so I'm actually this is just a one system load balancer so I'm actually going to use the, the, the standalone one so what you would then do is documented in the manuals uh, but it's not necessarily as clear as it should be but I'm going to copy the LB config standalone into the correct directory arc site uh, load balancer current user load balancer. Let's just copy that over. Now again, I'm just going to jump to that folder just so I can show what's in there. Oops. And there's my, my file. We actually have to uh, rename it. So I'm actually going to copy it because I want to retain the original to LB config.xml. Um, future versions, this will all be centrally managed using uh, ArcMC, but at the moment, 
we just use that. And uh, just for simplicity, I'm actually going to use a graphical edit for, editor to show what's going on config.xml. So uh, I do need to make some changes. It's set as using a, um, a, a template here. We do need to make some changes of what's going on. I won't go into too much detail, but from a very simplistic point of view, uh, with a couple of things we need to do to start off. Uh, first thing we need to do, we need to make sure that we've set uh, the relevant uh, IP address for my load balancer node here. Uh, 16100 uh, VIP port, uh, ping port doesn't actually make any difference because it's standalone mode. Uh, I need to define my primary node, which is 172.16.100.220. Uh, again, port number and so on, all this doesn't make any difference because it's just a single node. So all this member up and member down doesn't make any difference. Uh, I'll do another one, another demonstration video of how to set up in a, um, a load balancing uh, mode as well. This is just a single node. Next, we need to do a little bit of configuration. Now, I'm only going to just do a UDP uh, syslog here. So I'm actually going to start trimming out some of the stuff I don't need. So I don't need anything with TCP in there. So I get rid of that. I don't need my file connector. So I get rid of that. So, But my pool of connectors here says UDP syslog connectors, and it refers to two destinations, number three and number four. So if I just scroll down here to number three and number four, we can see here, uh, so these are the two connectors I've got configured, 172, 16, 100, uh, 221, and number 4, 172, 16, 100, 222, uh, UDP 514, and I need to set my management port, which is what I defined, 9001, and set that there as well, 9001. So that's my two connectors there. Let's scroll down a little bit further and, and define what we want to do. I don't need to worry about the file ones or anything like that. That's, that's nothing what I need. So I just need my rules. So I don't need to worry about my uh, TCP rule. So I can get rid of that one. I don't need to worry about my file rule. So I can get rid of that one. And that leaves me with the final bits here for the configuration. I just need the UDP one. So I get rid of that one. And I don't need my file one here. So I can get rid of that one too. So we can see that it refers to uh, the source name is UDP, the type of syslog. Actually, I'm going to just for differentiation, I'm going to make that 513 just to show that this is load balancer going in on 513 on UDP. So that refers to uh, this particular routing rule, which is here. Uh, and that refers to the rule here and it refers to the mechanism which we're using round, a weighted round robin. It then refers to, the, uh, refers to the destination pool name, which is UDP syslog connectors. If I scroll up, and then I get my uh, UDP syslog connectors, which refers to number three and number four, which refers to number three and moment four, uh, which is IP address and IP address and so on. So it's actually very simple. You just make the very simple configurations. So I'll save that and quit out of that. Now, what I would want to do is I do really want to check what's actually going on and, what, and uh, the process of the configuration. So let's go jump to the log folder, uh, current logs. Now it's blank because there's nothing there, uh, but I'll just get it ready. I can't run it because there's no file. Uh, what I can do is let's uh, jump into a relevant folder. And run. Of course, you would run the setup program to define it as a service and have it running automatically and so on. But I'm just running it manually just to show the installation process. Uh, and run the load balancer. Now my log file will be there so I can actually tail it so we can see what's going on. The important thing here is it's giving us some status of what's actually going on. Um, you can see a number of things are recurring as part of this. So if I actually just go back a second, uh, we'll see some information with regards to certificate pools. So we can see that it's logged in to 222. It's pulled the certificate. Uh, there'll be another one there for 221 as well. In fact, there it is, 221. It's pulled the certificate down uh, with uh, various things. And then we'll see at the very end here, load balancer started successfully. So 
that's it. It's as simple as it looks. It's as simple as the configuration as needs to be. Uh, there's nothing else required as part of that. Just make sure you do that uh, load balancing config file uh, and you point it to the right connectors and you strip out the other uh, ones that you don't need. In fact, you probably don't want to be load balancing just in case that somebody does accidentally send the data to it. And additionally, make sure you turn your connectors on uh, with remote management and then it will poll and pull the certificates and do uh, the process from there. So the configuration and process is actually very simple and very easy. Uh, and uh, that's about it from the initial configuration. Thank you very much.